At a time with the program trying to find itself, the team looked to the past to show what it meant to be a buff with the hiring of John Embry. One tradition he brought back was the brick wall of big wins. Although not visible to the public, the knowledge of the wall spread through word of mouth like a myth. Without seeing it, it's hard to say what it represents. It's hard to, to describe to someone who's just a casual fan what a lot of the bricks mean, but I think they can respect the fact that it's, um, you know, these are just monumental victories in CU history, and it's something that a lot of fans take pride in. The wall started with coach Bill McCartney in the early 80s and continued on through coach Rick Neuheisel and coach Gary Barnett until 2006 when coach Dan Hawkins painted over the bricks to establish his mark on the program. Coach Hawk probably wanted to, you know, build his own tradition, but at the same time, you know, you know, those bricks, you know, were the the foundation of CU. It was a part of history that was missing. And obviously when you've been a part of that history and you've seen that history being developed over the years, it was kind of disturbing, you know, knowing that it wasn't there. This wall represents more than just dates and scores. It represents monumental wins, lasting memories, and the building blocks for the program to remember what it is they were playing for. Yeah, it, it definitely gave you extra motivation. You know, Coach Embry each gave us a brick this year, you know, during the summer to show the importance of what it's like to bring the bricks back. And, you know, I think it's important for us to have that, you know, that tradition here. And, you know, when they unveil that wall, it's just, you know, you just, you're just overwhelmed with how much pride and tradition and that's here at this program. With every big win, a new brick goes up to recognize their team accomplishment on the field. The first new brick put up is a CSU victory from this season and the win even brought out some emotion. It felt great. Uh, you're, you're definitely going to be remembered for something. Uh, but for me, knowing it doesn't matter what you do in the past, it's what you do in the future. So I like to get more bricks up. Um, like I said, we got seven games left in this in, um, season. and. Uh, we expect to have more bricks up there. There are select games up on the wall that help commemorate the history of the program, but the players and coaches all have a game in mind that is also close to them. The Nebraska game when I coached here in 01, when we won 62 to 36. Now that one there, that 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 might be the most memorable one and mo probably the most special one in my book. 2007 when we beat Oklahoma, I think at the time they were ranked one of the top five schools in the nation, so that was a good win. The CSU. CU game in 2005, you know, when Mason saved us the 55-yard field goal. And I just remember watching Lawrence Vickers run that guy, that safety over in the end zone. All these bricks may be a remembrance of the past, but as Brian Lockridge best puts it, it's not a matter of what you do in the past, but what you do in the future. The Buffs look to continue the tradition, to add more to the wall to help build the story of the program. They just got to ask, who's next? Josh Rising, News Team Boulder.